January 2, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-January 2007 Chicago, Illinois, January 2, 2007, rates steadily climbed throughout the month, rising more than 30 basis points, the largest monthly increase yet. The yield curve remains inverted for more than a year. Libra dropped by a couple of basis points, as short-term rates hold firm. As the new year begins, incredible competition among capital sources assures ample funds for refinancing and new construction. In recent memory, borrowers seldom enjoyed such attractive terms. A note of caution, slight weakening of the subprime consumer mortgage debt market may trickle into the commercial capital markets, translating to higher yields. The year in review. 1. Mortgage pricing based on treasury spreads continued on a downward spiral. 2. Yield compression for nearly all property types evident, as entrepreneurial asset classes, lodging and office properties, attract pricing similar to more traditional venue, multifamily, retail. 3. New construction profits squeezed by dramatically increased material and labor costs. 4. An improving stock market posted double-digit gains during the year, offering investors more attractive options and posing a potential threat to the lower-yielding realty investment arena. 5. Overall. Commercial properties demonstrated sound supply and demand fundamentals. Lenders responded with extremely liberal underwriting terms and conditions. Observations Nats Vaslow, research director of the Real Estate Capital Institute states, 2007 will be a very dynamic year, as capital markets continue responding to changing real estate fundamentals. Some market corrections will create more balanced risk-adjusted returns. Furthermore noting, capital market price corrections are on the horizon. February 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-February 2007 Chicago, Illinois, February 1, 2007 During January, key treasury rates steadily climbed by about a quarter percent, rebounding slightly with yesterday's Fed announcement to hold rates steady. Overall rates are similar to spring, 2006, although mortgage spreads continued narrowing. As is the case since August with short-term rates, Bank Prime and Libra stayed unchanged. During the month, a variety of mixed signals hit the capital markets. The Labor Department reported the lowest inflation in three years. The Fed also warned of a financial crisis due to mounting government debt as baby boomers enter retirement age, warning of sharp spending cuts, tax increases or both. Housing starts unexpectedly rose and building permits to the highest their highest levels in four years. Lastly, residential construction dropped nearly 15% the biggest yearly decline since 1991. With incredibly competitive lending conditions, lenders have dropped spreads over treasuries by five basis points or more. Mortgage spreads between various property types remain very tight. Class A apartments, lodging, industrial, office and retail properties are priced within a 25 basis point range. The most commonly discussed issues within the past month include 1. Steadily rising rates. 2. Condo projects converted to rental units. 3. Have income property prices finally peaked? 4. Office markets continue signs of steady improvement. Observations James Postweiler, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute says, institutional buyers are increasingly optimistic about rental revenue growth accompanied by lower vacancies. He adds, cap rates and IRR targets remain steady and aggressive. March 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-March 2007 Chicago, Illinois, March 1, 2007, rates steadily dropped throughout the month, 
ending with a record one-day plunge just before the last day. Long-term treasuries fell over a quarter percent settling in the mid-4% range. Yield curve remains relatively flat, dating back to midsummer. Since the market is flush with funds, a variety of creative debt and debt equity programs surface. Funding solutions include the following. 1. Forwards, select life companies are offering combined construction and permanent loan programs based on forward delivery pricing. These construction and permanent loans usually feature the same rate throughout the term. The construction component stretches as far as 24 months, the perm ranges from 5 to 10 years. The pricing premium is between 1 and 3 basis points per month after the first quarter. 2. Preferred equity, in those cases when junior debt and MES financing are prohibited, lenders may offer additional funds by requesting a percent of ownership. Usually structured as a debt instrument. 3. Fixed prepayments, for an additional rate premium of 10 to 25 basis points. Lenders offer fixed prepayments, rather than defeasance or yield maintenance. Provides quantifiable exit pricing. In addition to creative loan structuring, lenders entertain a wider variety of property types including marinas, golf courses, heavy industrials and restaurants. Hot topics for the month are 1. Collateralized Debt Obligation Issuance, CDO 2. Sizing of loans with replacement cost as a key variable 3. Debt and equity yield compression. Where can yield be found? Observations. Aaron Grun, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute notes given the compression in cap rates is unlikely to continue, income growth will matter more for investors to achieve desired returns. Selecting markets with favorable demand supply conditions and assets with potential for increases in income is increasingly important. He adds, San Francisco and Silicon Valley are examples of markets where employment and space demand increases are translating into increased occupancies and rents. April 2, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash April 2007 Chicago, Illinois, April 2, 2007 Spring started with stable shorter-term interest rates, while longer-term rates increased to more historical norms. The difference between 5-year and 10-year treasuries widened to about 10 basis points, instead of maintaining nearly identical levels since the Fed's last rate increase in the summer. Furthermore, Many expect rates to stay flat as the Fed continues to wrestle balancing inflation with less business spending and slowing housing markets. Residential subprime mortgage concern slightly dented commercial mortgage market yields. Pricing readjustments filtered through with increases of about 5 to 15 basis points. Nevertheless, income property debt portfolios still show solid performance and overall spreads remain relatively low in comparison to earlier in the decade. Even in the shadow of uncertainty, Loan markets demonstrate resiliency as lenders voraciously hunt for yield. In fact, many analysts believe commercial mortgage-backed securities are well insulated from the subprime fray. These securities are based on diversified pools of properties. The individual pools are layered bond stacks, the highest rated tranches stay furthest from default risk. Moreover, in contrast to the housing market, the commercial real estate markets are additionally protected by indirect factors such as rising new construction costs constraining new supply, and strong consumer demand for most types of space including shopping centers, office buildings, distribution centers, hotels and apartments. In many markets, owners are comfortably raising rents, particularly on the coasts and key inland cities. Observations John Orenko, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute suggests, despite residential capital market woes, commercial real estate performance remains solid across the board. He adds, Given low mortgage and cap rates, investors readily contribute more equity to maintain favorable cash flow yields.
May 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard – May 2007 Chicago, Illinois, May 1, 2007 During the past month Treasuries bounced about an eighth of a percent, but closing at nearly identical levels to March. And while rates remained unchanged, the subprime mortgage market and other technical factors forced mortgage spreads to increase by about 15 basis points. As a result, BP debt buyers are now demanding greater risk premiums. In general, realty debt markets maintain strong fundamentals, but remain oversupplied. Therefore, lenders demonstrate tremendous flexibility to attract more opportunities. Many are not competing on typical terms and conditions such as coupon rates, leverage limits, debt service coverage and prepayment provisions, nearly all these variable are stretched to their limits. Instead, lenders are pursuing more atypical property types. Marinas, restaurants, golf courses, unflagged hotels and service stations are some of the new funding opportunities being entertained. In other words, anything with a reasonable cash flow stream is game in today's market. Key discussion topics include Today's market conditions dictate that yield maintenance and defeasance provisions are virtually priced the same, since overall rates are seen as declining by the bond markets. Low, stable rates support continued low capitalization rates, values are at peak levels. Despite subprime market concerns, commercial property fundamentals are solid. High construction costs and more restrictive land use policies keep new supply in check. Observations The Real Estate Capital Institute's advisory board member, John Oranko, notes, Realty capital markets are fraught with cash. Virtually any project backed by qualified sponsorship and sound economics is financeable. June 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard – June 2007 Chicago, Illinois, June 1, 2007 Real estate capital markets remain flush with cash. Overall permanent rates increased by about a quarter point, reflecting raising treasuries. Short-term rates, however, stayed unchanged in May as the Fed once again decided against any changes. Last but not least, Many lenders increased spreads by 10 to 15 basis points as a result of residential market subprime concerns, yet some funding sources, for example, life companies, kept spreads unchanged in order to stay competitive. Observations Fed keeps interest rates in check, fearing inflation risk. Recent economic slowing has not moved the Fed closer to a rate cut. Unemployment needs to likely rise to the ease Fed's inflation fears. Rates remain relatively low as foreign investors continue buying treasuries as safe haven investments. The Las Vegas ICSC record attendance and overall optimistic tone indicates that investors remain bullish on the retail sector. On the other hand, spring retail sales were lackluster as gas prices and a continuing housing slump are dampening demand. Many banks are now offering completely non-recourse debt for short and medium-term debt to provide strong competition to conduits and life companies. Similarly, more conduits and life companies are offering construction loans combined with mini perm debt to capture traditional bank funding opportunities. Despite low default levels for income property loans, continued concerns abound for loosening underwriting standards. According to John Oranko, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute, rates are still attractive despite overall increases in spreads and treasuries. Lenders demonstrate vast creativity in funding all types of loans. July 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard – July 2007 Chicago, Illinois, June 29, 2007 Funding volume remains steady despite concerns about the subprime lending issues. Currently, 
Income property permanent mortgage rates range within 6% to 6.75%, translating to pricing of 100 to 160 basis points above 5- and 10-year Treasury yields. In comparison to May, shorter-term rates increased by about 10 basis points and long-term by more than 20 points. By the end of the month, the Fed's decision to leave rates unchanged had a minimal impact on lowering rates. As a result, mortgage rates are steadily trending upwards. While rates are moving upward, the mortgage yield curve is behaving more normally as spreads widen between short and long-term bond maturities. Swap spreads remain tight as many debt investors flock to investment-grade CMBS notes as a more popular benchmark index. Furthermore, swap markets are extensively used by many financial institutions, especially banks, for creating fixed-rate structures to directly compete with securitized loan programs. The yield curve structure offers some attractive funding options. In particular, among the best price debt options in the today is the forward delivery mortgage. Premiums as low as 10 basis point over the current rate buys as much as 18 months of rate lock. Such spreads are nearly 40 basis points lower than only a few years ago. John Orenko, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute, notes borrowers still have plenty of funding options available for most property types. From a historical perspective, leverage availability and underwriting standards are more liberal than any time during the past few decades. August 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-August 2007 Chicago, Illinois, August 1, 2007 Realty capital markets are on a wild roller coaster ride as rising mortgage default expectations haunt investors and borrowers alike. Treasury note yield plummeted by nearly 40 basis points during the last couple of weeks. At the same time, mortgage spreads have radically widened by as much as 75 basis points as investors continue reassessing mortgage pricing dynamics. Until recently, borrowers enjoyed what seemed to be an unlimited supply of low-cost funds for fueling highly leveraged deals. Moreover, while debt performance benchmarks are within acceptable levels for commercial mortgage-backed securities, investors worry about subprime debt housing woes trickling down to commercial markets. Wall Street shows a greater disdain for risky debt as demonstrated by the stock market plunge of about 5% last month. Current market volatility creates new challenges. Borrowers should expect more conservative underwriting in the near future. Notable changes include, 1, less capital sources, particularly securitized debt lenders, 2, tighter underwriting with less interest-only payment formats and a return to more traditional leverage levels of 75% or less, 3, a flight to higher quality properties, 4, reduce supplemental leverage programs, for example, mezzanine, preferred equity, and, 5, fewer early rate lock commitments. In the meantime, many lenders are temporarily retreating from the mortgage market and taking a wait-and-see attitude to determine where mortgage spreads will settle. Jim Postwaller, a member of the Real Estate Capital Institute's advisory board, notes the following trends relating to institutional equity markets. Volatility in the debt markets and the resulting increase in spreads are affecting pricing for many leveraged buyers. Transactions with near-term rollover, vacancy or lower credit are being repriced due to more conservative loan underwriting. Conversely, replacement cost increases and expected rent spikes help maintain and justify further price increases. Unless a property is in a very desirable market backed by high-quality cash flow, sellers should expect more challenging price negotiations than in recent years. September 4, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard-September 2007 Chicago, Illinois, September 4, 2007 The end of summer season closed with tremendous volatility and uncertainty, 
without a doubt the most turbulent time this decade. Treasuries, Libra and mortgage spreads bounced around like ricocheting bullets, by as much as half a point. Fed's cash injection helped calm markets in mid-August. Doom and gloom still prevails. Yet many see the real estate capital markets as returning to more normal levels of three years ago. Underwriting standards, leverage and pricing are approaching more typical historical levels. Key real estate capital market highlights and trends are as follows. Mortgage patrols, frequent changes in market conditions, almost daily, require vigilant communications with capital sources to capture lending program changes and determine which sources are active. Rate premiums, first mortgage lenders demand more yield to compensate for uncertainty. Fixed rate mortgages spreads increased by 50 to 75 basis points, and in many cases even higher. Floating rate loans climbed by about 30 basis points or more. As for higher risk funds, where available and in scarce supply, including mezzanine and participating equity funds, premiums are 200 basis or more with tremendous pricing differentials. Conservative underwriting, along with higher premiums, less is more as far as leverage. Less proceeds, borrower negotiations, interest only funds are a few examples translating to more chances of a loan closing. Fewer sources, some lenders pulled out of the markets, while others are backlogged with more funding requests. Borrowers are still getting accustomed to this environment which is clearly swinging in favor of lenders, a trend not seen since the mid-1990s. Relationships count, borrowers with strong track records and loyalty are rewarded with liquidity. Lenders, especially those with balance sheet programs, will still be more aggressive with repeat customers. According to John Orenko, member of the Real Estate Capital Institute's advisory board, we're seeing more of a balance between life companies, banks and conduit lenders. He adds, during the last three years the CMBS markets completely dominated nearly all sectors of the capital markets and Wall Street's malaise brings a more level playing field for traditional lenders. October 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash October 2007 Chicago, Illinois, October 1, 2007 After two months of instability, the real estate capital markets are beginning to show signs of leveling off. As mortgage pricing and loan underwriting are substantially more conservative than during the first half of the year, lenders and borrowers alike are readjusting funding expectations to match current conditions. Although the subprime market has been the focus of many financial market analysts, floating rate, short-term debt dramatically fluctuated throughout the month. Libra, in particular, bounced about 50 basis points after staying stable most of the year. As a result, the following trends are observed. Fed's action of September 18, 2007 calmed realty capital markets as variable rate debt settled about 20 basis point below a month ago, after increasing over 50 bits per second during early September. Lenders are quoting deals on a day-by-day -day basis. Cash management and accurate pricing amid high volatility are key concerns among funding sources. Mortgage conduits, CMBS loans, reflect the higher end of the market with pricing of approximately 170 basis points or more. Life insurance companies redirect funding allocations towards higher quality, lower leverage properties as conduits retreat from pricing transactions below 170 basis points. Agencies are extremely active, FHA, FNMA and Freddie Mac, offering the most competitive terms in the marketplace for full leverage, for example, 80% LTV, immediate funding, multifamily properties. Banks and other floating rate lenders grapple with pricing over Libra or treasuries. Borrowers requesting more flexibility in structuring floating rate debt. Active funding sources are rapidly depleting allocations as borrowers scramble to capture attractively priced debt, mostly from life companies. As funds are more limited, lenders will occasionally dip below $10 million to capture more yield and round out their mortgage portfolios. Equity markets still in the middle of a price correction based on changing debt conditions. Many high-quality, 
institutional properties are pulled off the market as borrowers and see improving cash flow fundamentals are, even with more expensive and conservative price debt. According to John Oranko, an advisory board member of the Real Estate Capital Institute, we're seeing a major shift in lender psychology. November 1, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard November 2007 Chicago, Illinois, November 1, 2007 The August capital implosion is becoming a distant memory, as markets are returning to normal. The fourth quarter shows signs of strength as lenders and borrowers alike have readjusted funding parameters, and more importantly, expectations. Ample capital is available as lenders expect large fund allocations for 2008. October was a busy month and November should bring more excitement and predictability into the realty capital markets as evidenced by the following trends. Securitized lenders are gradually returning to the market, enticing borrowers with higher leverage by offering mezzanine with permanent funding first mortgages. Overall permanent mortgage market spreads decreased by 10 to 15 basis points. Mezzanine and layered financing pricing ranges tightened, the new range is within 12% to 16%. Life insurance companies continue capturing permanent loan with pricing ranges of 140 to 180 bits per second over comparable term treasuries for 10-year deals. Five-year deals usually feature higher spreads of about 20 basis points. Borrowers are shying away from highly structured transactions with more complex prepayment programs such as defeasance, in favor of yield maintenance or declining balance prepayment options. Wider pricing of 20 to 50 basis points appears for non-traditional properties including hospitality, land and more entrepreneurial properties. Sales markets are relatively healthy, demonstrating continued resiliency as investors crave high-quality properties. No major price corrections are evident for income properties, however, the retail property sector is on a watch list as slower consumer spending impacts sales. The Real Estate Capital Institute's advisory board member, John Oranko, notes, the markets are back to normal as defined about three years ago. Adding, market conditions earlier this year didn't reflect rational risk slash reward pricing as virtually no pricing premiums existed between various property types such as multifamily and hotels. December 3, 2007 The Real Estate Capital Scoreboard Dash December 2007 Chicago, Illinois, December 3, 2007 The last month of the year demonstrates brisk activity as cash is readily available for attractive investment opportunities and lenders remain eager to fund higher quality assets, although at lower leverage levels than borrowers are accustomed to. And while subprime woes attract negative attention to real estate, commercial properties and multifamily rental housing remain solid bets. As for realty capital market activities, November was an extremely volatile month as investors busily sort out mixed economic news, including the following trends and highlights. Mortgage market chaos continues sending investors to treasuries, hitting a two and a half year low during the month. 10-year treasuries traded within a 60 basis point range, settling nearly a half a point lower than a month ago. The inverted yield curve, short-term rates being higher than long-term rates, has evolved to more traditional behavior patterns. Today, the yield curve is trending upward, translating to longer-term rates surpassing short-term yields. By mid-November, CMBS pricing became extremely capricious as mortgage spreads widened as much as half of a percent within a week, particularly with securitized lenders. In fact, many CMBS lenders discontinued quoting new deals until markets show more stability and liquidity. At the same time, agencies, 
life companies and other balance sheet lenders raise their spreads by at least 20 basis or more and continue raising spreads on a daily basis. Certainty of execution is the most important variable in debt funding. As such, balance sheet lenders are in the forefront of the market. Aaron Grun, member of the Real Estate Capital Institute Editorial Advisory Board comments, the refound recognition and repricing of risk will in the long run be healthy for market participants. In the short run, the heightened sensitivity to risk means borrowers will need to demonstrate that the underlying fundamentals of transactions are solid and can withstand predictable potential changes in market and operating conditions. He adds, as the deleveraging process proceeds and markets become less volatile probably in the first half of 2008, additional capital liquidity and competition will return.